Coming in at our number 10 spot, we have the Goddess of Death statue. The ancient limestone statue known as the Woman from Lem, or more infamously known as the Goddess of Death, has been the subject of much speculation and superstition since its discovery in Cyprus in 1878. Dating back all the way to 3500 BC, the true purpose of the statue is shrouded in complete mystery, but it is believed to have been used as either a fertility symbol or a representation of a long forgotten goddess. Despite its small and unassuming appearance, the statue has been linked to a series of tragic events that have befallen each of its owners throughout the years. The first recorded owner of the statue was Lord Alphonse, who lost all seven of his family members within six years of acquiring this piece. The curse continued with Ivor Medici, the statue's second owner whose entire family died within four years of obtaining it. Lord Thompson Noel suffered a very similar fate, losing his entire family within four years of possessing the statue. The final owner, Sir Alan Biverbrook, and his family also met an untimely death after acquiring the statue. In an effort to break the curse, Biverbrook's two surviving sons decided to donate the statue to the Royal Scottish Museum in Edinburgh. However, even the museum curator who handled the statue met an untimely end within a year of its acquisition. Today, the statue remains safely well behind a glass at the museum. At our number nine spot, we have the Dark Mirror. The Dark Mirror is a very creepy mirror that has gained notoriety due to its disturbing vision it allegedly brings to those who gaze into it. It was obtained by the Traveling Museum of the Paranormal and the Occult from a woman whose mother had purchased it at a psychic expo. The mirror appears to use the energy of the gazer and show them their deepest fears and nightmares, including visions of their own corpse. The mirror is best used in Psychomantium, which is a setup in an enclosed area with only darkness used to communicate with spirits. Visitors to the museum have reported seeing themselves age, wink, smile, and even disappear during these sessions. The dark mirror has caused headaches, feelings of dread, and an intense electrical energy in some people as well. The previous owner of the mirror became withdrawn after trying to perfect her divination skills using the mirror and eventually kept it in a closet, saying that it was evil. Despite the negative experiences associated with the mirror, some people have been brave enough to try it for themselves, with some reporting only seeing their reflection, while others see something else completely. The mirror still remains a mystery and its true powers and purpose remain unknown. At a number 8 spot, we have the Bassano vase. This vase is a pretty little thing and pretty old too. Cast from silver in the 15th century and produced in a very simple design, it is one of the most mysterious and elusive haunted objects in the world. Originally, the vase was a wedding present for an Italian bride who lived in a small village in Napoli. On the woman's wedding night, she was found slowly passing away on the floor. Her hands were wrapped tightly around the silver vase, and in her dying breaths, the bride vowed to have her revenge and then passed away. Ever since, every owner of the vase has passed away tragically and in very mysterious ways. It was hidden away until it got auctioned and upon looking inside of the vase, there was a note inside saying quote, beware this vase brings death. It was then sold three different times in different auctions, but every single owner would pass away. Eventually it was buried and now no one knows where it's located, and that's probably for the better. Others believe it was taken in by a museum, but after a number of mysterious deaths from staff members, they decide to hide it from the public's eyes. Coming in at our number 7 spot, we have the Baker's Wedding Dress. This dress belonged to Anna Baker, who was a part of a wealthy family located in Altoona, Pennsylvania. They would reside in what is known as the Baker Mansion in 1849, the same year Anna fell in love with a man and planned to get married. But her father Elias was like, no, 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 that's not happening. It's believed he said no because he was a part of a different social class. He didn't want the marriage to happen so bad. He even got the man banished from the town. Anna was heartbroken as a result and just begged her dad, but her dad just kept telling her no. She then went on her way to buy her own dress, which is the one in this picture, and showed her father, and he was still very adamant on his decision. So in spite of her father, she never married even after death. Fast forward to 1922, all the members of the Baker family passed away, and the mansion had been bought by the Blair County Historical Society and then turned into a museum. In the museum, guests report seeing the glass of the dress being shaped taken violently, and others report seeing a woman apparition in a black dress staring into this display, and perhaps it's Anna from the grave. But I guess we'll never know. At number six spot, we have the Dybbuk Box. In June last year, Post Malone visited the Haunted Museum in downtown Las Vegas with Zach Bagans, host of the TV show Ghost Adventures. Bagans took Malone into the most notorious room in the museum, which held the Dybbuk Box, widely considered the world's most haunted object. The cabinet is haunted by a Dybbuk, which is a malicious spirit, and was first put up on sale on eBay in 2012. According to the seller's description, it was purchased from a Holocaust survivor's granddaughter who brought it in Spain after escaping 
escaping the occupied Poland at the time. Manis, the buyer, found a series of strange items inside, including two pennies, locks of hair, a small statue engraved with the Hebrew word Shalom, a golden wine goblet, a dried rosebud, and a single candle holder with octopus-shaped legs. The box passed through a few hands before the last owner consulted with rabbis on how to seal it for good. Then Post Malone was with Baggins when he decided to touch the box for the very first time, and Malone grabbed Baggins' shoulder while he was doing so. The curse was apparently transferred to Post Malone, and he experienced a series of unfortunate events. His private plane was forced to make an emergency landing after its tires blew out, three armed robbers targeted a home in San Fernando Valley that they believed to be his, and his Rolls Royce was involved in a serious car accident. The Dipic box has a long history of strange occurrences surrounding it, with previous owners experiencing horrific nightmares, strokes, and physical ailments. In the hump of our list, we have the Ring of Sylvanus. This is a cursed ring that was first owned by a Roman man named Sylvanus. This was a rather large ring with a diameter of an inch, so it was believed she wore this on her thumb or even over her glove. But one day, his ring was stolen from him. He believed it was taken from a man named Sinicanus, and Sylvanus then proceeded to place a curse on the guy by heading up to a temple and creating a lead plate naming it the Cursed Tablet. On this tablet, he wrote, quote, for the god Noden, Sylvanus has lost a ring and donated one half of its worth to the Nodens. Among those named Sinicanus, permit no good health until it was returned to the temple of the Nodens. It is believed whoever owns the ring will fall ill, get into accidents, or have things happen to them which will lead them to everlasting suffering. And fun fact, this is the same ring that inspired Tolkien's Lord of the Rings. So it kind of makes sense. In 1785, it was found on a random farm, but now it is placed in good hands in a museum that is not known, which is probably for the better since no one will be ever to place this curse on their finger ever again. At a number four spot, we have the Busby Stoop Chair. In 1702, Thomas Busby was convicted of murdering his own stepfather. Story goes that on his way to his execution, he requested one final thing. This request would be simply to have one last drink in his favorite pub. Nothing harmful, right? So the judge decided to let him do it. After permission was granted, he decided to have a beer in his favorite chair at the bar. Here is where it gets kind of worse. After finishing his drink, he said aloud, quote, may sudden death come to anyone who dares sit in my chair. He was then escorted to his execution and his body would be displayed right outside of the inn for all to see. Over the years, death struck many who sat in the chair, leading the landlord to donate it to the Thirst Museum in England. Locals claim that during the Second World War, Canadian airmen from the nearby base at Skipton on Swale, went to the pub, and those who sat in this chair never returned home from their bombing missions over mainland Europe. To avoid anyone sitting on it, they suspended it five feet in the air to stop any future tragedy. Regardless, this chair looks super uncomfortable, so I would even know if I want to sit on it, cursed or not. At a number three spot, we have the Okiku doll. Let me start this off by saying that this haunted doll is worse than Chucky. The story starts in 1918 Japan. Older brother Aikichi Suzuki bought a doll for his two-year-old daughter Okiku. The doll had a black bob cut and a traditional kimono. His sister loved the doll so much that she even named it after her own name. These two would become so attached like no other. But in the following year, Okiku became gravely ill and ended up passing away. To commemorate her, her family put her favorite doll on her memorial shrine. Everything seemed fine until after a few days, they would begin to notice something very strange. The doll's hair seemed to be actively growing, and every time it was cut, it would just keep on growing until it just reached just above her knees, which actually happened to be the place where the human Okiku's hair stopped. Eventually, her family would move away, but choose to keep the doll in the same place, thinking that Okiku would have wanted that. Now it resides in the Menenji Temple, where it's said that monks will cut the hair regularly as it keeps on growing. At number two spot, we have Annabelle. I know you heard this one, but it's too good of a cursed object to leave out of this list. For all who don't know, the doll's name Annabelle comes from the alleged spirit who possesses it. In the early 1970s, a young college student named Donna gave the doll to Ed and Lorraine Warren, a now famous pair of paranormal investigators. Originally, Donna received the doll as a gift from her mother, who purchased it in an antique shop. Over time, Donna and her roommate noticed that the doll had a tendency to move, be it from locations throughout the apartment or positions upright, legs crossed, etc. After more paranormal activity, the girls contacted the Warrens, who decided the doll contained a demon straight from hell. When an exorcism failed to do the trick, the Warrens agreed to move the doll to a secure location inside of a glass box at their museum in Connecticut. Unfortunately, their museum has been since closed down and only a small select few can still visit. So best believe this museum is locking away all these evil objects contained in the building now and probably for very good reason. 
Coming in at our number one spot, we have the Terracotta Army. This is a one-of-a-kind, 2200-year-old funerary art. The Terracotta Army is considered the most priceless archaeological discovery of modern times. However, for those seven farmers who discovered it back in 1974, the warriors have been proved more of a curse than a blessing. Soon after the discovery, their farmlands were claimed by the government and their homes were demolished to make way for exhibition halls and various gift shops. Upon the seven, one took their own life while the other ones passed away tragically since they couldn't afford health care. Some have blamed the government for their passing while others believe this is a similar curse to Tut's tomb. Coming in at a number 10 spot, we have the Fukushima nuclear power plant. The Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant in Japan experienced a catastrophic disaster in 2011 after a powerful earthquake and tsunami hit the region. The damage caused the cooling systems of the reactors to fail putting them in danger of a meltdown. Although Fukushima Daini was shut down in two days, the Daiichi plant was not as fortunate. The disaster resulted in three nuclear meltdowns, explosions, and even the release of radioactive material in the surrounding areas, which resulted to the Pacific Ocean being heavily contaminated. The Fukushima disaster is considered the most significant incident of its kind, and second only to our number one entry, the disaster had a far-reaching impact as it led to a four-stage evacuation order, affecting thousands of people who lived nearby. Many people lost their homes and were forced to relocate due to the dangerous levels of radiation. But despite the disaster, the Japanese government continued to operate other nuclear power plants in the country. And if you look at it on a much grander scale, nuclear energy is the cleanest. Although many of you guys would like to deny that, it is. But regardless, these type of disasters is the main reason for us looking towards renewable energy sources, with Japan increasing its investment in solar, wind, and all other forms of clean energy. The aftermath of the Fukushima disaster is still being felt today. The region continues to grapple with the environmental and health impacts of the disaster, while the plant itself remains a major concern in the region. At a number 9 spot, we have the Hanford site. Hanford Nuclear Site in Eastern Washington, one of the three sites that made up the government's covert Manhattan Project, is the most contaminated place in the United States, if not the world. The facility produced plutonium for the atomic bomb dropped on Nagasaki. Today, it is home to 56 million gallons of nuclear waste, leaking storage tanks, and contaminated soil. Hanford is an environmental disaster and a catastrophe in waiting, writes journalist Joshua Frank in his new book, Atomic Days, The Untold Story of the Most Toxic Place in America. Hanford is shrouded in secrecy, which began with the Manhattan Program, and even now, it's still very much like a covert operation because of the dangers that exist with the potential for an attack on one of the nuclear waste tanks. Hanford is also the costliest environmental project the world has ever seen. The known environmental dangers of Hanford include 177 underground tanks that hold about 56 million gallons of nuclear waste as I mentioned before 67 of which have been leaked in the past into groundwater that feeds into the Columbia River Coming in at number 8 spot, we have the elephant's foot. In 1986, a catastrophic nuclear accident occurred at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant in Ukraine. Eight months later, workers discovered a startling phenomenon, a black lava that had flowed from the reactor core resembling a human-made volcano. One hardened mass in particular was particularly shocking and was nicknamed the elephant's foot because it resembled the foot of the massive mammal. The lava formation was found to be so highly radioactive that it would just take five minutes for a person to receive a lethal amount of exposure. The elephant's foot weighs an estimated 2.2 tons and is known as lava-like fuel containing material. It has remained a macabre object of fascination since its discovery. The elephant's foot is composed of a rare substance called corium, which is produced in a nuclear accident where nuclear fuel and parts of the reactor core structures overheat and melt, forming this weird mixture. Corium has only been formed naturally five times in history, once during the Three Mile Island accident in Pennsylvania in 1979, once at Chernobyl, and three times at the Fukushima Daiichi plant disaster in Japan in 2011. It's said that everyone who came in contact with the foot passed away shortly after. However, to this day, this is not confirmed. And also, there's no way of getting rid of it, so it's just laying there forever, waiting for its next victims to come across. Number seven, the Siberian Chemical Combine. The Siberian chemical compound in Severus, Russia was established to produce weapons grade plutonium and highly enriched uranium on a massive scale. The plant is located in a closed town requiring access documents to be shown at every single checkpoint. The top 7 reprocessing complex at the plant was the site of one of Russia's worst nuclear accidents in 1993. During the cleaning of a tank with nitric acid, it overheated and caused a large explosion, severely radiating the plant and significantly raising levels of radioactivity 
radioactivity in the surrounding areas. Although the facility's plutonium and uranium production capabilities were shut down after the accident, the isolated and remote plant continues to store low and intermediate levels of nuclear waste for weapons and radioactive waste. The plant's location within a closed town and the lack of oversight from government agencies raises concerns about the safety of nuclear materials stored at the site. And some say that even walking in this place for 30 to 50 minutes is enough to end your life. So just beware if you're ever in Russia for whatever reason. Number six, we're back to Russia with Mayak, Russia. In the far flung reaches of Russia's northeast lies the industrial complex complex of Mayak, home to a nuclear power plant that has been operating for decades. But the legacy of Mayak is far from one of progress and advancement. In fact, it has become synonymous with disaster and environmental devastation. In 1957, Mayak was the site of one of the world's worst nuclear accidents when an explosion released up to 100 tons of radioactive waste into surrounding areas, contaminating it for decades to come. The explosion was kept under wraps by Soviet officials until the 1980s, when the true extent of the damage was finally revealed to the public. But the disaster at Mike was not an isolated incident. Starting in the 1950s, waste from the nuclear power plant was dumped into surrounding areas and into the nearby Lake Karache, leading to the contamination of the water supply that thousands of people relied on daily. Over 400,000 people had been exposed to radiation from the plant as a result of the very serious incidents that have occurred here, including fires, deadly dust storms, you name it. The aftermath of Mike's nuclear plant has left a legacy of environmental devastation and human suffering in the area, and it's really sad just to know that this all actually happened. In the hover list, we have Lake Karachay. Lake Karachay was once the most contaminated body of water on Earth due to radioactive pollution. It was located near the Mayak Production Association, which was a nuclear facility that was established in 1945 as the primary production facility for the Soviet nuclear weapons program. The plant's crude reactors were designed to create weapons grade isotopes with little regard for safety. The contaminated waste was initially dumped into the nearby Teka River, which led to dangerously high levels of radiation in communities downriver of the plant. In 1951, the worst of the waste was diverted to Lake Karache, and this practice continued until the 1990s. The radioactivity of the lake is both in its water and in the layer of radioactive sludge that lines the lake bed. Measurements taken by the same group of scientists found that the earth around the lake had a specific activity of 740,000 megabec quarrel per kilogram. And that just by standing near the shore, you'd be exposed to a dose of 5.6 sievert per hour. The lake began to be filled and concreted over in the mid 1990s with the project wrapping up in 2015. However, the damage had been already done and the legacy of the catastrophe would endure for centuries. Number four, the Polygon. The vast and desolate region of modern day Kazakhstan was once used by the Soviet Union for nuclear weapons testing. Despite being home to over 700,000 people, the area was deemed uninhabited by Soviet officials, making it the perfect location for the USSR's atomic bomb program. The nuclear site was where the USSR detonated its first nuclear bomb, marking the beginning of a dark chapter in history that saw the largest concentration of nuclear explosions ever recorded. Over a period of 40 years, from 1949 to 1989, the facility saw a staggering 456 nuclear tests as the USSR sought to flex its military might on the world stage. But the impact of the testing and its devastating effects on the environment and human health were kept under wraps from the public, with the Soviets only revealing the extent of the radiation exposure when the facility was closed down in 1991. The consequences of the Soviet Union's nuclear ambitions has been far reaching, with an estimated 200,000 people suffering from the direct health effects of radiation exposure. The desire to destroy foreign nations has left a dark legacy of nuclear contamination hanging over the heads of those who were once citizens of the USSR. Number three, Goiânia, Brazil. In 1987, a seemingly routine break-in at an abandoned hospital in Goiânia, Brazil ended up causing a devastating tragedy. Two robbers looking for scrap metal stumbled upon a small capsule of highly radioactive cesium chloride, which had been used in a radiotherapy device. The robbers unknowingly took the dangerous material with them, spreading the radiation throughout the entire city. Tragically, four people lost their lives as a result of the radiation exposure. The contamination spread very quickly, and several city blocks had been demolished due to the high levels of radiation. In total, over 300 people suffered from radioactive contamination, and radiophobia swept through the entire city. More than 100,000 people were queued to be screened for radiation exposure, fearing the worst. 
To combat the radiation, topsoil was removed from several contaminated sites, including schools, homes, and hospitals. Levels as high as two sieverts an hour were found in some locations, which is 200 times the annual dose limit for workers in the nuclear industry. It took months to decontaminate the affected areas, and even today, some parts of the city still remain contaminated. Number two, Somalia's coast. Organized crime and nuclear waste may not seem like they go hand in hand, but in Somalia, it's a different story. Over a period of years, an Italian crime syndicate called the Non Greta allegedly loaded ships with nuclear waste and then sank them off the coast of Somalia and other developing African countries. This has contaminated the water and caused long-term damage to the environment. For background information, Somalia has been in a state of civil war for many years, which has prevented the formation of a strong government. This means that illegal dumping of nuclear waste was able to go unnoticed for many years starting in the 1980s. Swiss and Italian companies are thought to have used the area as a dumping ground for years, and as a result, the waters surrounding the coast of Somalia are reportedly highly toxic and radioactive. The dumping has caused damage to the environment and to the people who are living in the area, with many cities and other small towns having to completely abandon their homes because of the deadly effects of radiation. There's even been rumors that the dumping is still going on, so it looks like this will pose a bigger and bigger threat as time goes by. Number one, Chernobyl. We all knew this one was gonna be on this list. The Chernobyl disaster of 1986 was one of the most devastating nuclear accidents in history. It occurred at the Chernobyl nuclear plant in Ukraine and resulted from a combination of flawed reactor design and human error. Disaster led to acute radiation syndrome in at least 237 people on site. Although nobody off site suffered from acute radiation effects, large areas of Belarus, Ukraine, and Russia and beyond were contaminated in varying degrees. The Chernobyl disaster was a unique event in the history of commercial nuclear power where radiation related facilities occurred. The reactor's design was unique and the accident is thus of little relevance to the rest of the nuclear industry outside the Eastern Bloc. However, it has led to major changes in safety culture and industry cooperation, particularly between the East and West before the end of the Soviet Union. At number 10 spot, we have the Turpin family house. David and Louise Turpin's 13 children grew up in a highly controlled environment. It was so abusive that when the media raided their home and discovered what the kids endured all these years, they dubbed their home the House of Horrors. Their eldest sister, Jennifer, mentioned that the siblings were only allowed to eat once a day and bathe only once per year. They were reportedly left starving while the couple enjoyed eating junk food. The kids were beaten up a upon the slightest attempt to steal food from their own parents. And the children were punished for the silliest things and even faced violent beatings from both their parents. Luis once pushed one of the siblings down the stairs for entering her bedroom while their father beat them with sticks and belts until they bled. The police found that the children were malnourished and some were even chained up. There were even lots of filth found inside of the rooms. And it was reported that the children were forced to live around such filth, including rotten food, spoiling garbage, and the sight and smell of feces. At a number 9 spot, we have the White House. Of course, the White House is on this list. However, I could only pick one point. William Harrison was the ninth president of the United States and holds the record for the least amount of time as president, just at 31 days. But his ghost has been there way longer than that. Passing away from pneumonia, William Harrison would also be the first person who died inside of the White House. Not the greatest achievement, I guess. Now witnesses report unexplained noises coming from the attic, specifically over the area of Yellow Oval Room, which has now been connected to Harrison's spirit. Now there is a complete third floor that has replaced the attic. However, workers still report seeing Harrison roaming the halls and his own room. His apparition appears to take on a blue glow with him coughing profusely due to his pneumonia. Although no harm has been done by his ghost, the third floor seems to be avoided as much as possible for those who work at the White House. At number 8 spot we have the Heyman House. Located in Sutton Braxton County, West Virginia is the Heyman House. Built in 1894, the William Heyman House is a very historic place in the state with its rich interior craftsmanship and rare decorative materials. However, However, going through more recent owners and visitors, the locals now claim that there are more than a few spirits living inside of the home. During the time Heyman lived at the house, he suffered the passing of his 8 year old granddaughter and another one of his family members who died from strangulation. Visitors claim that the mirror in the foyer is guarded by a grey haired woman, while the second floor is haunted by a woman in white. At a number 7 spot with the Fairy State Plantation Home. With 11 spirits calling the Fairy State Plantation House their home, Haunted House seems like a fair title for this site. Now used as a museum and education 
Educational Center. The house also offers Halloween tours called the Stroll of Lost Souls. And it's also a regular site for ghost hunters and paranormal activity groups. The story goes that this house was used originally as a school, tavern, and then eventually a mansion. Once the mansion burned down in 1828, it was reconstructed by abused and mistreated slaves. The house's many spirits included the woman in white who fell down from the stairs and the slave named Sally Walk who is said to still be grieving for her late fiance. But the most famous one here is Grace Sherwood, who is named the Witch of Pungo. She was in fact the last person convicted of witchcraft in Virginia, having to spend seven years in jail and later being released. But when she passed away, reports say that her body disappeared without a trace, leaving many to believe she truly was a witch. At number six spot, we have the Thawi Watana Deserted House. This is a supposed cursed house where everyone who has entered the house would be met with a terrible fate. In the Thawi Watana district of Bangkok, rumor has it that in 2015, a group of early teenagers entered the home. They were just out partying, so they entered the home drunk on alcohol and high on other narcotics. The reason they entered the home was because many locals claimed that the house was indeed haunted. So the boys decide to go check on it for themselves. This ended up being a very terrible decision later on. It said that whoever enters the house will have one of the home spirits attached to them. It wasn't until three months after when two of the boys were fatally wounded in a motorcycle accident, and then a year later, a third boy also got into another fatal accident. Then in the next year, two more of the boys lost their lives in a house fire. The odd thing about these deaths was that the witnesses claimed that they saw a woman in white sitting on the backs of the motorcycles before their accidents. And also, they saw the woman in white at the house before the fire. In the hump of our list, we have House of Horror. The only horror movie to win Best Picture Oscar, Silence of the Lambs, made Hannibal the Cannibal Lecter a chilling household name, while putting Thomas Harris's bestseller and the true crime cases that inspired it into the national spotlight. I know Hannibal was a different type of beast, but he was inspired by a real life serial killer named Gary Hednick. He was probably the furthest from being good as he was Philadelphia's most notorious criminal. He was infamous for his house of horrors where he would do unimaginable things to six different women that I can't even mention in this video. Even in the movie, Hannibal asks Starling, quote, what does he do? This man you seek. In which she replies, he attacks women. They could have easily been talking about Gary Hednick in this scene, especially since he inspired Buffalo Bill as well. Number four, the Villisca Axe murder home. On June 10th, 1912, Josiah and Sarah Moore were bludgeoned till they ended up passing away inside of their home in Villisca, Iowa. Their four children and two friends who were spending the night also passed away, and to this day, the crime remains unsolved. Their home is considered to be one of the most haunted houses in the country, and guests are drawn to it still. People even pay $400 to stay just one night in this home, and tours have been cut short by children's noises, falling lamps, moving ladders, and even flying objects. And even in 2014, a paranormal investigator stabbed himself after spending a night at this home. Number three, the house on Ridge Avenue. In the north side of Pittsburgh lies where it's also known as the house the devil built. The house is also 1129 Ridge Avenue and known as the Conglier House. It was built in 1860s by Charles Conglier who lived in the house with his wife Lida and their maid Essie. The maid and Charles would be having a secret affair and soon after the wife overheard what was happening so she collected a knife and a meat cleaver and proceeded to murder the two. She would be found later humming lullabies as she rocked on her chair. Then in 1900, Dr. Ada Brunreicher purchased the home. One day, the neighbors heard a woman screaming in the house and called the police. Once the cops arrived, the doctor was nowhere to be found, but instead there was only the body of the woman with no head. Then a single mother and her five children lived there in the 1920s, until a nearby natural gas tank exploded and killed the mother, causing the five children to be left abandoned. Although the tale is said to be fabricated, many of the stories about this house are indeed true. Number two, Tulsa's Hex House. Located on 10th East 21st Street in Oklahoma is the remnants of a home that was once a horror house. The owner of the home during the 1940s was a 45 year old woman named Carolyn Smith. However, she wouldn't be the only resident in this home as she would keep two other women there as quote unquote slaves. These two women were named Virginia Evans and Willetta Horner who were 30 and 31 years old at the time. They claimed that they're being hexed by Coraline and were basically forced to give their paychecks directly to her with their big reward coming when they arrived in the gates of heaven. Basically Coraline would keep these two women in her basement and just live off their checks. But that wasn't all. She would also receive request aid from one of her slave's parents in which she received a total of $20,000 for nursing care. After the two women were suspected of missing, a police investigation eventually found them in prison in this home, living in the worst condition and this was during a span of seven years. 
Corlin would only get subjected to one year in prison and the house was demolished with a parking lot built on top of it. However, some believe that the basement is still underneath this parking lot. At a number one spot, we have the Amityville house. 30 miles outside of New York City, nestled in the Long Island town of Amityville, stands a house forever linked to the Amityville horror phenomenon. On November 13, 1974, the estate was the scene of a horrible event. Using a .35 Marlin rifle, 23-year-old Ronald Defoe took the lives of his entire family while they were asleep, which included his parents and four siblings. 13 months later, the Lutz family purchased a home at a drastically reduced price of $80,000 but only lasted 28 days before leaving it. Their spine-tingling tales of paranormal activity are what propelled the legend of the Amityville Horror and spawned a torrent of books, documentaries, and even films. George was said to wake up at 3.15 a.m. every morning, which is around the same time Ron carried out his murders. The Lutz family claimed many things happening in the home, like the smell of strange odors, see green slime oozing out of the walls, and keyholes and experience cold spots in certain areas of the home. When a priest came to bless the house, he allegedly heard a voice scream, quote, get out. He told the Lutzes to never sleep in that particular room in the house ever again, and ever since, this legend has carried on. At number 10 spot, we have Boot Hill Cemetery. Oddly enough, the Boot Hill Cemetery is located in a town named Tombstone in Arizona. Coincidence? I think not. Now to educate some of you, the term Boot Hill came from the hundreds of outlaws who would pass away wearing their boots. Since these outlaws were not from the town, they would have them buried at this cemetery. This means that the cemetery is filled with pretty bad people. And not only that, they are buried here alone and away from their family. So it's really no surprise that their spirits are really pissed off. However, for many visitors, that's not even the most unsettling thing about this place. When you begin to investigate it, you'll notice that the criminals are buried right beside their victims, with the details of their crimes written on the tombstone. Ever wanted to visit a cemetery holding the most notorious criminals in America? Then this place might be for you. At number 9 spot, we have Georgiana Cemetery. The Georgiana Cemetery, otherwise known as the Crooked Mile Cemetery, is a graveyard in Florida that dates sometime in the early 1800s, which would mean that much of these graves were early settlers, which is pretty odd to think about when you walk these grounds. Now locals believe that the cemetery is haunted by one spirit and a very aggressive one. They believe it's the ghost of a local murder victim named Ethel Allen, who was only 19 years old when he was found murdered and mutilated on the banks of the Indian River Lagoon in the early 1900s. The case would end up going cold and he would be laid to rest inside of the cemetery. And ever since, the atmosphere of this place feels completely off. At number 8 spot, we have the Natchez City Cemetery. This cemetery is pretty Pretty normal from the outside, nothing too haunting from its appearance, and not enough history to make the place horrifying. However, when you walk these grounds, you may stumble upon a very odd grave. This is the grave with stairs. This eerie grave belonged to a girl named Florence Irene Ford. Then in 1871, shortly after her 10th birthday, she passed away from yellow fever. So the reason for these stairs. When the daughter was alive, she was always terrified of storms. So since she has now passed, the mother decided to build stairs down to her casket in order to comfort her daughter when it got stormy. I mean, it's such a sweet idea until you realize it's also kind of scary. She would go down these stairs, close the trap door above her, sit in complete darkness while singing hymns and songs to her daughter. I could only imagine what the people walking by must have thought. Others believe that you can still hear the daughter yourself when it's stormy weather and you decide to walk down these steps. At number 7 spot we have Highgate Cemetery. The cemetery in its original form was made by the Bishop of London on the 20th of May 1839. It was part of an initiative to provide seven large modern cemeteries to ring the city of London. In 1970, Highgate Cemetery became run down, overgrown, and undeniably spooky. In February of that year, David Ferrant claimed he had seen something strange a ghost-like figure. He became convinced that satanic rituals had been taking place within Highgate Cemetery grounds, and that an evil entity had been summoned there from another realm. At number 6 spot, we have Hollywood Cemetery. The local residents of the town have made claims that the mausoleum of W.W. Poole holds the remains of a vampire. However, this is not your ordinary vampire. The story goes that in 1925, the Churchill train tunnel collapsed with workers still inside. Now the tragedy of that is very real, but surprisingly in the wreckage, a bloody man appeared with jagged teeth and skin hanging from their bones. Everyone had thought it was just a mere survivor of the incident, but here is where it gets kind of weird. As they get closer to the man, the man quickly jumped and ran away to the nearby Hollywood cemetery and disappeared into this mausoleum. They say that the vampire still inhabits the cemetery grounds, which has led many satanic and cult groups to visit in an attempt to summon the vampire once again. 
In the hub for list, we have the Bonaventure Cemetery. Established all the way back in 1846, the Bonaventure Cemetery has been the most photographed cemetery in America. Much of that is due to its undeniable beauty, but after thousands of photos, there have been more than a few unexplained things caught on camera. The most notorious tombstone is that of a six-year-old named Little Gracie Watson. Gracie Watson was born in 1882 and grew up in the Pulaski House Hotel that her parents W.J. and Francis Watson ran. Unfortunately, when Gracie was seven, she contracted pneumonia and passed away on April 22nd, 1889. So in honor of her untimely death, a beautiful statue of her sitting was built. Nowadays, many guests leave offerings and gifts such as toys, flowers, and nice notes for her. But when people try to steal these gifts, she will cry tears of blood. Others have said they see the little girl smiling at them as they walk by, while others report hearing children cries from underneath her tombstone. At number four spot with the odd fella Masonic Cemetery. Unfortunately for those living in Lafayette, but your city has been supposedly cursed since the 1800s. The story goes that back in the early 1850s, a woman in the town was accused of witchcraft, which is pretty common back in those days. And just before her execution, she yelled out to the people watching, saying, that the town would burn down a total of three times. And ever since, the town has burned down twice and people are still waiting that third time. Later, the alleged witch was buried in the Oddfellow Masonic Cemetery, where it's said that she has walked up to more than a few visitors during some nights. At a number three spot, we have Graceland Cemetery. The town of Mineral Point in southwest Wisconsin was terrorized by a vampire for a short period of time. More specifically, these sightings were first reported back in 1981. It was a snowy night when police officer John Pepper got calls saying there was a mysterious figure that looked like a vampire walking around the cemetery. When the officer arrived, he immediately noticed it, but supposedly it began to run at incredible speeds to the point when it lost the officer within seconds. After the report was completed, not another vampire sighting would happen until 23 years later in 2004. This is when several eyewitnesses claimed that a strange slender man was attacking people by jumping from them atop trees. The police arrived again only to see the figure run away at supernatural speeds. Then in 2008, a couple was fishing when they spotted a tall pale slender man with alleged fangs approaching them. Luckily, they noticed it immediately and pulled out a flashlight to see it more clearly. And they claimed that the light started to physically hurt the man, which led more and more people to believe it was actually a vampire. At number two spot, we have the Moon Point Cemetery. Just south of Streeter in Livingston County lies the old graveyard named Moon Point Cemetery. It got its name from Jacob Moon, who along with his daughter and three sons, was the first to settle that area. After years of war and other fatal tragedies, this place has been haunted by the ghosts of its past. One of these ghosts includes the ghost of a hatchet lady. Legend has it she has often visited the cemetery to watch over her son's grave after he passed away during the Civil War. Eventually, she would pass away as well. But immediately after, her ghost took up the vigil wielding a hatchet. She has been heard yelling and even whispering at visitors to get out of the area. And on some full moon nights, she is seen throwing hatchets around the cemetery. It doesn't help the fact that vandalism is happening at the cemetery, so it's basically confirmed that the spirits here are very unrested. All the way at our number one spot with the Salt Lake City Cemetery. In the middle of the Salt Lake City Cemetery sits a gravestone reading quote, Lily E. Gray, June 6, 1881 to November 14, 1958, accompanied by the very ominous phrase, victim of the beast 666. Lillian remains a mystery and her headstone forms a source of wild tales of her being sacrificed to Satan or that she herself was a Satanist. Some have speculated that she was another innocent woman accused of witchcraft, but other theories claim that because Utah is full of ominous places, she probably died on Highway 666, one of the country's most infamous dangerous freeways. At a number 10 spot, we have Iroquois Park. If you go to Louisville's 735-acre Iroquois Park in the middle of the night, you might spot a pretty horrifying apparition. This apparition is known as the Headless Woman of Kentucky. According to the legend, a farmer's wife was alone in her home in Iroquois Park while her husband was away on work. Soon after, her home was attacked by a native tribe and they ended up executing her and their family dog. Except not only did they murder her, they cut off her head and kept it somewhere inside of this park. Nowadays, she can be seen past midnight walking through a thick fog as she holds her severed head. And this is not all. The park has been the scene of many unsolved murders and other disappearances. So this place, despite being very beautiful, is a place you shouldn't stroll through after dark. Seems like both the living and the dead are after you here. At a number nine spot, we have the Auckland Domain. 
In the heart of Auckland is a public park known as Auckland Domain. And at first glance, this park is beautiful with stunning gardens and impressive trees. But aside from all of that, this place has a very dark history attached to it. Inside of this park is a sculpture that is quite different from others you may see. That's because this sculpture is that of three witches who were brutally executed inside of this park during the early 1800s. I mean, this was a time where witchcraft was believed by many and unfortunately, a lot of people would fall victim to this hysteria. So sometime during the 1800s, three accused witches were caught by the townsfolk and hanged inside of this park. From what we do know now, these people were probably normal and due to this unjust death, it said that their spirits still wander the park grounds. In some parts of the park, visitors report hearing distant cackling made by a group of ladies and others report seeing a tall thin figure wandering through the trees which many believe are the witches. If you do go deep in the woods at night, it's no surprise if you come out covered in scratches and cuts like something had scratched you with long sharp claws. At our number 8 spot, we have the Great Otways National Park. Supposedly, there have been alleged sightings of this big cat here in the Great Otways National Park in Australia. These supposed sightings have been documented since 1830s, ranging from rumors of big cats in the bush by new eastern migrants to sworn testimonies and videos taken in more recent years. All have given the legendary creature a similar description. A large black four-legged creature, very similar to a panther, but not a panther. Some explanations have a historical exotic animal trades or an evolutionary trail of feral cats in the area, while others have suggested that they may have come from traveling circuses or visiting soldiers years ago. Regardless, these beasts are said to live in the Great Otways National Park, so just in case there weren't enough things to worry about in Australia, Here's another one. At our number 7 spot we have Stanley Park. Stanley Park in Vancouver, Canada offers both tourists and locals a vast natural forest, beautiful beaches and great hiking spots. However, beyond the sunshine and rainbow, much of the park has been infested with the spirits of its past. For example, the rowing club in the park is said to be built on burial grounds of early Chinese immigrants and ever since the construction of this building, the rowing club has claimed that their clubhouse is haunted by these disturbed spirits. Then we have the Lionsgate Bridge in the park, which has been a place where many have claimed their own lives, including a place where many ships sank in the waters below. Here visitors claim to hear disembodied voices coming from underneath the bridge and along the seawall. Then we have Dead Man's Island, which is just speculated in mystery. From a battleground to a barrel ground where smallpox victims would be buried, this island is a place you would not want to be stuck on. At a number 6 spot, we have Pierre Marquette State Park. Illinois' Pierre Marquette State Park spans an area of about 8,000 acres, and this includes a cliff area known as Lover's Leap. This cliff overlooks both the Illinois and Mississippi rivers, and if I didn't tell you about this next story, I bet you would have wanted to catch the view. But let me change your mind real quick. The legend goes that an Indian brave and a maiden of another tribe fell in love. And despite the fact that both of their tribes absolutely despise one another, the tribes had set up so many walls that they even used starvation as a tactic of war. Because of this divide, the two were forced to stay away from one another and the chiefs of each tribe forbid them from marrying one another. No exceptions. So just like Romeo and Juliet, the two met up one last time at Lover's Leap and proceeded to jump off the cliff together because they thought if we can't have each other, then no one can. Now couples who go near this cliff have the sudden urge to jump off with their partner, even if they come to the area completely happy with no personal issues. In the Humperer list, we have Oak Hammock Park. Inside of Florida's own Oak Hammock Park sits an old oak tree that locals believe is evil and could be a little bit cursed as well. Or more accurately, that something evil occurred there and still haunts the land. Story goes that in 1971, before the park was even established, Gerard Schaefer, an ex-deputy for the Broward County Sheriff's Office, assaulted and took the lives of two 19-year-old girls, Colette Goodenow and Barbara Ann Wilcox. He then buried them beneath an old oak tree. He was arrested for homicide and stabbed till he passed away in prison in 1995. The girls have been missing since January 1973, but their bodies weren't discovered until 1977, when two fishermen notice bones protruding from the ground. Local legends and ghost stories about the area include claims of blood curdling screams erupting from the surrounding woods, ghostly apparitions and camera malfunctions near the devil's tree. Police have responded to numerous calls claiming devil worshippers in hooded robes were performing rituals there. And in 1993, the local pastor conducted an exorcism and even put up a cross at the site. Numerous efforts to cut down the tree even failed with chainsaws malfunctioning and even axes breaking. Ever since, it's been kept up as a historical site, but they still believe in its evil intentions. At number 4 spot we have Trollwood Park. In Fargo, North Dakota is the Trollwood Park. And at first glance, it looks very nice, right? Well, it was built directly on top of a cemetery. 
Obviously, those who built the park knew of this and already planned to move many of the bodies away, but it's confirmed that they didn't manage to take all of them out, which is not a good thing. As briefly mentioned, the Cass County hospitals built on the park around 1895, and over the years, many people were left buried with no tombstones or even a marking of their location, which is why many remain in this park to this day. One notorious ghost that haunts the area is that of a woman dressed in a blue dress that dances around the trees. And other visitors claim that the ghosts here like to call out names in order to get people to lay them to rest. In one instance, erosion caused one of the graves to resurface, causing one visitor to trip on real human bones. Number three, Hummel Park. Despite being a very beautiful park in appearance, there's a much darker story to it that makes you think twice before stepping foot here. This area is said to be the place where many lynchings, hangings, and satanic rituals were performed. And some believe they are still happening to this day deep within the woods of this park. A stairway in this park has been known to be called the stairway to hell because it's reported that it's impossible to count the same number of steps ascending the stairs as descending the stairs. And there's also the report that a group of albino people inhabit the woods deep in the park. They're believed to be either a large family or a collective group of homeless people, but there haven't been any reported attacks by them, so they're pretty much harmless. Other than the fact that this place is covered in satanic graffiti, this place is just one of those places you just shouldn't test out. You know, just in case. Number two, we have Candy Cane Park. Located in La Grande, Oregon is the Candy Cane Park, otherwise known to locals as Hatchet Park due to the accident that happened within the park grounds. Candy Cane Park was like any other park, apart from the fact that it followed the theme of candy canes all throughout. Kids love to go to this park due to its appearance alone, but it all changed in 1983. This is when a young woman named Dana DeMars was strolling through the park at night, when all of a sudden, someone came out of the woods with a hatchet and started to chop off her limbs, including an attempt to behead her. She ended up passing away from her injuries in the park at the young age of 21. Now locals claim that her spirit calls the park home. She would be seen on the merry-go-round and when children would go on it, she would spin it uncontrollably. Her presence on the merry-go-round was so noticeable that the park even removed it for good in 2003. The park still remains intact and many people in the park think twice before playing here now. Number one, Barnard Park. Barnard Park appears to be a wonderful location where families take their kids on the weekends. However, few people are aware that the park is also one of Nebraska's most terrifying haunted locations. The grounds of Barnard Park was once used as a cemetery in the 19th century. And in that same period, Vermont's population increased significantly beyond the cemetery's capacity, which prompted the city to close it and move it. According to reports, while the city moved the dead, some of them were unintentionally left behind. People claim to have witnessed a lady sobbing that night and their ghosts are still said to remain in that area.